three things that you need to do in your marketing and in your business, really, to, to be successful. Three things, not 33 things, not 333 things, three simple things. jump in here and hopefully uh, give you guys some great information that you can take with you and um, really utilize and implement because that's the thing, right? People say knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. Know-how is power. And what I'm going to give you is not only knowledge, but the, the, the steps that you can go do to implement this, to put it in place so that you can have know-how. That means you're actually doing something with the information. So, First of all, my definition of marketing, there's a ton of them out there and there's a bunch of them that I like, but I love this one. I actually, I actually modified this from a guy named Joe Polish. If you don't know who Joe Polish is, go look him up. He's a great marketer, world-class guy, just, just a really good man. Um, but Joe says, everything you do to put yourself in a position to sell something to a new or existing client is marketing. So it could be one-on-one. -on -one. That could be um one to many doesn't matter but everything you do to put yourself in a position to sell something to a new or an existing client because your biggest 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 opportunity to make sales are to an existing client because a buyer is a buyer is a buyer i know that's really really philosophical that's really really deep but it's also really, really true. A buyer is a buyer is a buyer. Here's another philosophical one for you. Ready? How people buy is how people buy. What do I mean by that? Well, if you buy at a live event, you will buy at another live event. If people buy online from you, they will buy online from you again. So we have a tendency. We're habitual creatures. So we do things over and over again in the same way. That's really good news for you really good news for you because once you know how people buy, you can go back and sell to them again and again and again. Now, before we jump into the marketing triangle, I want to cover one more thing. All marketing is not created equal. I'm a big direct response marketing person. That's the only kind of marketing I use. It's the only kind of marketing I recommend that you use. There's a huge difference between advertising and me too marketing or, you know, image marketing and direct response. Here's the two things that make direct response marketing direct response. The first one is two characteristics. Sorry, I sometimes get ahead. My mouth gets ahead of me pushing the button for the slides. I'll apologize for that in advance. The first thing about direct response is that it's measurable. If you're doing marketing or advertising, which is more like it, what you're doing, and you can't measure it, you're wasting your marketing dollars. If you don't know where your marketing has come from, if you don't know where your sales are coming from, if you don't know where your new clients are coming from, then you don't know what to do, what to do. You don't know what to do more of, what to do less of. You don't know where to put your marketing dollars. You don't know where people are coming from, right? So it has to be measurable. How much did I spend on that ad, on that marketing, on that email sequence, whatever it is? How much did I spend? Where did I put it from? And how many new clients did we get? How many sales did we make? How many, how many opt-ins did we get, right? Depends on what you're measuring. You can measure different things. The second thing is, that your marketing requires action. What does that mean? That means you have to make people move. You get to have to get them to do something, right? Go to this web page, leave your name and email address. That's 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 taking action, right? Bring in this coupon if you have a brick and mortar, right? Faxes, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm old school, right? But put the coupon code in, right? Do you have a promo code? That's taking action to do something. So two things that make direct response marketing, it's the only kind of marketing you should be using. I know that's a big statement. I know it's really pretty strong about that, but that's how strongly I feel that marketing is not marketing is not marketing. Direct response is the way to go because you have those two things. Your, one of your biggest jobs, guys, is to get people from this position on the sofa right? With their favorite drink in hand to doing something, right? You've got to get people over what I call the inertia of being where they are. Get them involved. That's the key to everything that you're going to do in your business. All right. So here's the marketing triangle. There's three parts. Notice I've circled the arrows because all of these are interrelated. If you get two of these right, it's not going to work. They all have to be right. The, here's the good news. They don't have to be world class. They just have to be right in order for you to make a ton of money in your business. I'm assuming that everybody on the call 
or on the, the, the Zoom and R, the, the, as Damien calls them, wants to make more money. Okay. So there's three parts and I'm going to go through each of these. The marketing trial consists of your message, your market, and your media. And they're all three interrelated. You'll find that I have a hard time talking about one without talking about the other. So I'm just going to let you know that ahead of time. So you know that, that you're going to hear that. Okay. All right. So first let's start with your message, your message, your message is the what it's the what, what are you saying? And how are you saying it? I, gosh, you know, my dad used to say, Diana, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. I used to hate hearing that so much as a kid, right? Sometimes I hear it again as an adult, have to, have to, you know, back myself up a little bit. But what are you saying and how are you saying it? In other words, what are the, are you using the right words so that your audience gets your message? That's your market. We'll talk about that in a minute. And how are you saying, are you saying it in such a way that they hear you? And, and that you're not just in the, the gobbledygook, right? Our grandparents saw 3,900 marketing messages in their lifetime. Most of us, have, as we're out and about in our world, hell, if you're on Facebook, you see more than that in one day. So you were bombarded. So the, your message has to stand out. Your message has to be a little different. So what is it that you're saying? And here's the other key, guys. Your message has to be clear. It has to be crystal clear. You have to talk to people on their level. They have to know exactly what it is that you're saying, and they have to know why you're saying it. Why do you want them to do the things that, that you want them to do, right? What are you saying? How are you saying it? And why are you telling me this, right? A lot of times we say you want to enter, you want to enter the conversation that's already going on in your prospect's head. Another way to say that is you want to solve it. You want to be there when they need a problem solved, when they have a challenge, when they have something that they need fixed, your message wants to be in front of them. And then you don't, it's a, it's a much easier sale, right? So you cannot, absolutely cannot be a secret. And way too many of you, my guess is, and I'm, that 30 years of, of experience tells me this, Way too many of you are a secret. You've got to get out there and let people know you're there. You've got to say, hey, check this out. Hey, look at this. Hey, if I could, send, if I could save you 10 to 25% on your merchant services, would you have a 10-minute conversation with me, right? That's a message people are like, what? You've got to get their attention. And here's the thing that most of us do. We think about our business all the time. Our heads are constantly going. And so that translates into, I'm always marketing, but you're not. What I tell people is ABM, always be marketing. And when you think you've done enough marketing, do one more thing. And when you're comfortable doing one more thing, then do one more thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right? Because you're never doing as much as you think you are. Yeah, but Diane, people are opting out of my email. So what? They weren't your ideal client. I don't, I couldn't tell you how many people opt out when I send emails. I don't look at that stat because I don't care. I want to talk to the people who want to hear from me. And notice that we're we'll talk about media here in a minute. Actually, I'll skip that and, and tell you about that then. Um, so your message has to be important and or your message has to be out there. Don't hide, right? The the days of you all probably, if you've been around more than a few years, you've seen the the, the comics, right? Of the of the 300 pound guy sitting in front of the computer selling diet products. Those days are gone, right? Or the one of the dogs saying, hey, online, on, on the internet, nobody knows we're dogs, right? That kind of thing. That's not it anymore. This is a personal kind of thing. Get out there, let people know you're there and let people know in a very clear way what it is that you have to say, all right? And here's the thing. A lot of people say, well, Diane, I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to say. It's easy. Make your mess. We've all had messes, right? Your message. Make things that you see. You know, I have a really good friend who sent me a message the other day and she said, you know, she said, I think you're one of your brilliance, Diane, is that you can take anything and turn it into a business message. It doesn't matter if it's in your personal life, if it's something that you see happen in your local community, if it's a nationwide event, if it's something, you know, and we have to be able to start to do that. Where are the messages that you can begin to talk about and relate to with people, right? Your mess, 
What have you messed up in your life that you've, that you've either turned around or you walked away from? There's always a story in that. So that's an easy way to do it. Here's the other one is to use stories. They don't have to be your stories, but they can be. When they're your stories inside of your message, people relate to you more, right? And, and, and a lot of times I think we have this tendency, I do this, I'm really bad about this. You know, I don't share enough about me, right? I, I, I tend to be a little bit private. You know, I talk, I don't talk a lot about things that, that happen. I just put a story up the other day about um, Thursday, actually, in my, in my newsletter, as well as online, um, about growing up and the persistence that I've always had as an athlete and, and, uh, and all that. And people respond, right? There was a picture of me playing softball in, in high school on there. And, um, you know, it's just interesting, but people want to know about you. They want to know who you are. So again, I, my thing is share things that are personal, but not private. That's how I, that's how I draw the line. It's personal, but not private. Um, so I'll give you a quick example. This is not a fun one, but um, I was in a 20 year relationship in business with this person for 15 years and the relationship ended. Well, we were in business together. I couldn't not say something, but nobody needed to know the circumstances. So basically what I said was this person has moved. They're going their own way. I'm going to be running the business from now on. So you'll see complete marketing systems as Diane Conklin. That was it, right? So I used parts of, of, of that, made the announcement, but I didn't tell any personal details, okay? So that's just a way that, that I sort of make that determination, right? So think about when you were a kid, it, or if you have kids, or if you have grandkids, right? Stories, what do they love to do? They love to sit in your lap and read. They love to sit in your lap and, and tell stories. We've lost the art of storytelling, and stories are such a big part and an easy way to get your message across. Again, they don't have to be about you. They could be about your clients. They could be about something that happened out of, with a prospect. Could be about something that you that you read online, right? And it's okay to be a little controversial. So I just put a post up on Facebook the other day, yesterday, I think it was. Yeah, it was yesterday that I saw a post in another group that, that just abhorred me. I mean, I was just like, oh my gosh, this person was asking for advice to speak on a topic that she had no knowledge about. And she was trying to put a course together. And so I took parts of it, massaged it a little bit, put it up on my wall. And I think there's a, last time I looked, there were over a hundred responses, a hundred comments from people. So again, it wasn't necessarily my story, but it, it became part of my message now about my business and how I, how I do things in my business based on somebody else's, what will be a mess. <laughs> So every, here's the thing to remember, every message that you send has to stand alone. So many of us, as we begin to write emails and we, get, we begin to do marketing, we think, well, they already heard that, right? So we don't have, we'll just build on the last one. Uh-uh. Don't ever assume that anyone has ever read or listened to anything else that you've done. Big, big, big mistake that you'll make, right? So each message that you send has to stand alone. That's really important. If you don't do this, you're gonna lose people because they'll be like, what? And don't say, well, in the email I sent you yesterday because nobody wants to have to go find that, right? And nobody's, some people have deleted it and that's okay, right? Just make every message stand alone so that the message that they get today is the message that you want them to hear. If they've already read it, you could send, my guess is you could send the exact same email message for three days in a row and very few people would even realize it was the same message. Why? Because they're getting hundreds of messages every day, because people are busy in their lives, because people aren't necessarily tuned into everything we're doing. That's a revelation to me. You mean everybody's not thinking about Diane? No, they're not. So make sure that each message stands alone. And does the person who's reading or looking at your message know what you want them to do? Are you clear? This is critical, you guys. Because, and, and here's what I would tell you, have somebody else read it and say, is this clear? Do you know what you want me to do? I'll give you a really quick example. I had a client who reached out to me yesterday um, with an, an email that they were going to put out and she was testing something. This is very interesting. She had the message there with the links, the clickable links in it. And at the bottom, she decided to put just a little, little quick blurb and a couple pictures of the things that she had put links in up higher in the email, but she didn't tell people what they were. 
There was nothing there. It was just there. And I'm like, well, what is this? And what do you want them to do? Right. So we just put a quick little link in there or a quick little verbiage in there that said, here's the quick links to, for you to get to um, the things that I talked about in the message above. So they didn't have to scroll back up. This morning, she sent me a message and over 40% of the clicks came from those that little test area that she did in the bottom. And my guess is, is that it, it increased that because people knew what they were supposed to do. So you've got to tell people, you know, go to this website, order now, um, click this link. You've got to be really clear. People are dying to be led. People want to know what it is that you want them to do. It's okay to tell them. Okay. So make sure they know that. All right. So there's your, there's your what. All right. What is your message? How are you talking to them? And why are you telling me this? I call that reason why copy. And by the way, guys, when I talk about copy, copy isn't just written form. Copy is any kind of communication that you're doing. What I'm doing right now is, is copy. It's copy. It's, I didn't write all this down, right? But it is a form of copy. It's a, it, my message tonight is, is, is verbal. So why are you telling them is critically, critically important. Okay, so that is message. All right, market. Now let's talk about the market. So we've got the message. Now the market is your who. Who is your message for? Who are you talking to? Who are you targeting? This is really, really important because think about this, guys. If you have the right message, but you're not talking to the right people, you've wasted your marketing dollars. You've wasted the investment of your marketing in that regard. So you want your market to be very specific, very narrow focused, because here's the bottom line. You are not for everyone. You do not want to be for everyone. But Diane, I, 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 want as, I want as big a market as possible. Yeah, you do. But when you market to everyone, you talk to no one. So you want to be specific and narrowed. And I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to get a, a resource related to this if you want it here in a few minutes, right? Here's the thing. When you start talking about your target market. So let me give you an example before we do this. If you were a dog groomer, would you prefer to go out with your services to a group of plumbers or to a group of people who were poodle owners? Hopefully poodle owners. Why? Not just dog owners. Notice I didn't say dog owners because not all dogs have to go to the groomer. Poodles do. Poodles have to be groomed if you, if you keep them upright. But Diane, plumbers might have dogs. Yeah, but if I have a marketing budget of, let's say, $1,000 to spend, to invest, <laughs> do I want to invest it in plumbers or do I want to invest it in poodle owners? I'm going to take my $1,000 and invest it in poodle owners because the chances of them utilizing my service are exponentially better than the few people out of, the, out of those plumbers who might own a dog. All right. So very specific. You've got to know who they are. Here's the other thing that happens is people think they're being specific. I want you to think when you start to think about who my target is, who's my market for this? Can you find them? So if you say to me, well, Diane, it's, it's women who are on the verge of retirement, who are frustrated and, um, you know, they want to change. I can't, how do I find those people? How do I find them? Can I, here's the way I look at it. Can I buy a list? Can I go to a, a, an offline list broker and say to them, I want a list of women who are five years from retirement who are frustrated? can't do it, right? They're going to look at you like, what? You can't buy a list of them. So I've got to go back now and be more specific about who my market is, if that's the case. So I really want you to think, think offline now. Don't think about email lists. Think about, I'm going to go invest money with a list broker to buy a list and send them direct mail, which means I'm going to pay for printing and stamps. This makes this, the reason I'm, that I'm talking about this this way is because it makes it way more meaningful than thinking about doing a Facebook ad that I can test for $20. I've got real money invested if I'm going to go buy a list 
and send a direct mail piece. That's going to make you hone in and really focus, 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 focus on who your target market is. And are you one of them? You don't have to be, but sometimes it helps if you are. You are, t- even if you are, don't get into this idea that you are your client, even though you're in that target group, because many times you're not. But if you are one of them, it makes it easier for you to speak their language, to talk in lingo if they have it, and to relate to them on a different level. Here's another example. This is what I'm talking about, about being able to target in and buy a list. If you said to me, Diane, I want to find people who own one-legged purple parakeets who live in Buckhead, Georgia. We could go to the list broker and see if we could find that list. Now, it might be small, might be too small, but that's how specific I want you to think about. Who owns a one-legged purple parakeet? I don't know, but I bet you if people do, we could go find a list of them. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an example on the extreme, but I want you to get that your target, the market, who you're talking to is so critically important. All right. So I actually have a checklist that, that will walk you through this process, that will walk you through things and you'll be like, Diane, how do I know this? Or Diane, why is this important? You know, if you have a list right now of potential clients, then you know some of this information already. If you don't have a list of clients, if you don't have a target market, then you get to decide who your target is, even better. So if you guys want that checklist, um, you can get a free copy of that. Just go to targetmarketchecklist.com. I'll send that over to you. It's just a great sort of, it's just a two-page sheet, but there's going to be things on there that are going to trigger you that you've probably never thought of before. So I'll give you guys that if, if you want it, it's available for you. So your market is the who. So, so far we've got your message, right? Is what are you saying? How are you saying it? And why are you saying it to them? Your market is the who. Who are you, who are you talking to? Two of the three things. Do you see how you can't separate these things and make them different? Or I mean, separate them and only work on one? All three have to go hand in hand. So let's talk about the media. This is the where. Where are you talking to them? Well, hopefully you're talking to them. You're, you've got your target now. You've got your message. And now where you talk to them has to mesh. Because if, they're, if your target market isn't hanging out where you're advertising or marketing, again, this doesn't work. Three simple things, right? So again, are they reading offline papers or business journals? or those kinds of things. Maybe they're online, but there are still people who get things in the mail and there is still media that's offline, right? Are they listening to the radio? Are they on TV? Are they in the mail or are they on social? And that's the, that's the piece where everybody is going to gravitate to. You gravitate to social media because everyone's there, right? Well, not everyone is there. We know that. We gravitate to social media because it's free. It's not free. Okay. Your time has a value to it, whether you're, it's $20 an hour, $100 an hour, or $1,000 an hour. So there's a cost involved. The problem is, is that most of us don't look at like the time cost ratio, right? We just, we just start doing things with, with no strategy, with no real plan to do things. And then we wonder why they don't work. If, if you're doing something and something doesn't work, the first thought I want you to have is which of these three things aren't working? Which of these three things isn't congruent in my marketing triangle? Okay, all of these places, and there's, there's way more places. By the way, for those of you who looked at the TV and was like, ah, she's lost her mind. If you have a local business, local television is not as expensive as you think it is. I had a really successful client, actually I partnered with him for a little while in Lexington, Kentucky, who ran real estate ads during the news, very inexpensively, very inexpensively, and they worked great. Why? Because people don't DVR the news, the local news, they watch it live. And so he was very, very successful. Here's the other cool thing about TV ads in your local market is 
you don't have to shoot, you don't have to come up with content and shoot video and do all that. You go to the studio, they do it for free, which is kind of a cool thing. Radio ads, same thing. They can be very, very affordable. And the, again, these are areas you have to make sure that your people are there, that your target is there, but they're more affordable. And there's a lot less people probably doing this because they think what you might've thought three seconds ago, which is it's too expensive. I can't do that. That's why we tend to go to social. All right. So here's some good news for you. You don't have to be everywhere. All right. Or in other words, you don't have to be in all of those media at the same time, at least not all at once. So you were sitting there thinking, gee, she wants me to be in five different places at once. That's expensive. That's going to take a lot of my time, blah, blah, blah. Nope. You don't have to be in all of those places at once. But what would, wouldn't it be cool if it seemed like you were? And there's lots of easy ways. I call that being omnipresent, right? A lot of times people say to you, gosh, I see you everywhere. My immediate response is this. Yes. Right. I see you everywhere. How do you do it? You do, and again, that comes down to scaling and leveraging and some of those things that some of you may be ready for, some of you may not be ready for. But <clears throat> start with one or two of these areas, get really good at it, get successful ads running. And here's the good news. You can then move your ads or this marketing that you're doing from one media to another relatively, sometimes you have to change them and tweak them, but they sh if they work in one, Media, they should, a similar ad or the exact same ad many times will work in another media. So the great thing about social is this. It's a great way to test, right? Go out to Facebook or go out to LinkedIn or go out to Twitter or wherever it is that you're, you know, Pinterest, whatever you're using from a social media perspective, test some ads, invest a hundred dollars. If it works, then take that, then in, then roll it out. Now, don't go spend a thousand dollars. If a hundred dollars works and that's converting, then spend two hundred dollars. Then spend three hundred dollars. Right? Don't go from a hundred to a thousand because that's the way money gets eaten up. Right? Unless you have, you know, if you're making a million bucks and you can do that, then it's fine. But now diversify a little bit. Get that ad running because because you can test it really inexpensively on social. Now go do a print ad. Now go take that ad somewhere else because if you can make them work in one place, they will more than likely, not always, but most of the time will work someplace else, which is a great way, right? So what do we have? We've got message, market, medium, all three. Do you guys see how all three of those tie in? All three of them have to, have to work, right? You can't just do two out of three. You can't do one out of three. Message market media, right? The way you went in tic, in tic Tac is three in a row, right? There weren't two little bears. There were three little bears, right? There's got all three of those have to line up. If all three of them don't line up, if just one of them is off, your marketing won't work. Message market media, all three, right? If you say I love you to the wrong person, you're in trouble. <laughs> you might get slapped, right? If you don't, Valentine's Day is coming up. If you don't say I love you to the to your special someone or do something special on that day, right? Again, message market media. And I'm having a little fun with this, right? But the point of the matter is you have to get them all together. If you talk to the right people, but you're not, but they're not there, they're not in the media where you are, you've wasted your marketing dollars. If if so if 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 the if the market is right and the message is right, but you're in the wrong media. You could be in the right media with the wrong message to the right people. But if they don't, if they can't hear you, so all three of those things have to be lined up. And you'll know this because you're going to test. Testing, you know, the great thing about marketing is people say, well, we were testing. In the real world, that means you, you, you failed. You screwed up, right? It didn't work. But in marketing, well, we were just testing that. I love that about it, right? Same thing if you think about like vegetables in a supermarket or at your, your local, if you guys have like a, we have farmer's markets here. Not everyone wants those fresh fruits and vegetables, much to my chagrin, right? But they don't. Again, you've got to have the right message, the right media, and the right market. All of those things have to line up. Some of those people who don't want the vegetables want the, want the dessert and the goodies, right? 
I'm more of the tennis shoe kind of gal. And I'm, I am totally this person. I just got in the mail today, the third pair. I laughed because I do all this slide was on here. The third pair of the exact same shoe in a third color, right? Message, market, media, all three of those things have to be lined up. All right. So that's your marketing. Um, for those of you who want to know a little bit more about sequences and marketing funnels and those kinds of things, there's another freebie for you. Um, no more marketing funnels. It's just a little, uh, little, uh, I'm trying to say a little report on funnels. I give you an example of sort of a funnel that you can use for a lot of this marketing um, that we didn't get into a lot of marketing, um, but you could certainly use it for the marketing that we've talked about here. Thank you.